hope my table doesn't collapse under your weight, you fat bitch. I need a haircut. Hi. You guys really love HP Mini Computer Madness. So, I've gone all in madness today. Today, I present to you my new newest acquired machine of all the newest acquired machines that I have, my HP System 750. This is probably not an old one machine. It's from 1991. But it's probably one of the coolest machines that I have. Those computers were HP's first kind of try to get mini computer power into the hands of single user affordable workstations. And I say affordable in the most quotation marks because this machine would set you back in 1991 a whole whopping $12,000, which is a lot. But this thing packs a punch and I just got this from the dumpster three days ago and um, I want to explore it because I have, except of what's on the label here, no clue what it is. You can open up the front and it says some warning label. Um, so it has some sort of laser compact disc, but it looks like like the media is like bigger. I, uh, and I couldn't find, I thought it would be like the, the HP, uh, no, 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 the, the IBM discs, but they're too big to fit in here or the like compact laser disc rewritable, like they're this big. Like they look like a, a CD cage or like a CD case with CD in it, but you can't open it. It's just like that. And then you can put the cartridge in. Both of them don't fit in here. So I, I have no clue what this is, but it also has the classic tape drive that you can open up and they take those tests, they, those yeah, like normal 3M tapes. Just put it in here, close it up and it's in. Super cool how they did that. Very nice loading and unloading mechanism. It's kind of a fairly standard um, tape. But that's all you have when it comes to front IO. There is a hard drive in here, I think. But that's, that's basically it. When you turn it around, there is not much either. There is um, an audio port, which I thought is interesting. Uh, the normal HB, uh, uh, HBHIL keyboard. I hope I don't need this because I don't have an HBHIL keyboard. Um, then an RS-232 port, a second RS-232 port, Ethernet, parallel port, SCSI port, and that's it. You nothing more that, that's it this was probably the most basic machine you could have had none of the expansion slots are populated and none of the expansions are here it's bas just the basic machine so I want to try opening it up and looking what how it looks inside let's try to get the top out of here because I see a thumb screw I would think that the top slides back like this yes and it does it absolutely does stuck come on here we go so this side is rather unspectacular. I found the interesting part though. I guess I am not supposed to be in here. I just was like, oh yeah, I can take this cover up, but you can't. Um, it's attached to the motherboard up here. It's attached to the thing. You, there will be the CPUs inside. I can through the grill, I can see the CPUs, but uh, you can't look into it. This. Uh, they didn't really try to make this uh, a nice visual visual thing. As yeah, so I put back the screws and we're just gonna take off this cover because this cover should be taking offable. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. And we reveal nothing. Lovely, but this now is, suppo uh, is uh, supposed to be taking offable too by pushing down 
and pulling out. Yes, that is indeed the case. Mm -hmm. And we also reveal the expansion slots. And those are the expanded ISA slots. I uh, knew about that. Um, that basically you can put ISA cards in here. You can put like the, their own like proprietary um, expansion cards in here. But there is not much more to it except of, of, of that. That's rather disappointing. Yeah, you can take a back panel off, but that also reveals pretty much nothing. This is not a very visualized PC. And uh, HP was already very good at making their parts very not serviceable. Because that panel here, you know, they're connected here. That's, that's all one panel here. And it even goes below here. So I would have to like tear it down a lot to get into it. But that is very disappointing. <laughs> um, because I would kind of hope that I could have gotten more into it and see more stuff. Okay, so after that, rather disappointing taking it apart and looking inside attempt because if I would have to tear, if I would want to tear it down, I would actually take it apart completely and probably never get it back together. Because I don't want to take it apart, I'd never get it back together. Um, I put it back together now and I'll just hope I don't do my normal checks that I do and just pray that it works. Let's throw some electrons at this thing and Look as if it does anything. Okay, I got out the VT220 terminal and um, we're gonna turn that one on first. I'm gonna configure it to the standard configuration when the CRT is warmed up. Um, 9600 baud, transmit, 8 bit snow parity, one stop bit local echo, no, uh, local echo, yes. Here we go. And then um, to directory, online. Here we go. So now we are online. And now I'm going to plug in the HP computer. Three, two, one. Now the capacitor made funny sounds. And three, two, one, go. It does do something. I hear a hard drive spin up. Hard drive does hard drivey things. There is a blinking heartbeat LED that probably should blink. And there is a SCSI LED, then that may be networking and that's a power LED. Let's actually open up the panel. There are more LEDs down here that also do something. It might not be happy about something. The hard drive also doesn't sound too bad. There's a little bit of broken bearings, but it doesn't look like that there is any, um, any output. In that case, I might have a broken cable. So, or uh, a K a null modem cable or something. So let's try. So let's try another cable real quick. Okay, I found another cable. Maybe that one will work. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything is happening. And I think it should at least like have told me that it turned on. So let's actually plug in the second serial port. And do it again. Which again doesn't look like anything. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, well. Let's tr let, let's test my serial cable. In fact, it's ground, right? Wait, in fact, it's ground, but then the other ground will be here, pin seven, right? So let's put it into pin. Oh shit! It fell out. Here we go. So pin seven. 
Perfect. Okay, so that's correct. Then pin three will be TX. So then pin three will be RX. Good. And then pin four will be pin two will be then RX. That will be pin two TX. Okay. So I made a null modem cable. So possibly I need to revert that. Possibly I just need to change the RX and the TX lines. This soldering chop is so ugly. Holy shit. This is one of the ugliest soldering chops that I ever saw. And it's made by me. Holy gazonkas. I am impressed. But like in a negative way. This shit. Now it's still not pretty. But at least a tiny bit less ugly. Maybe with the TX and RX line changed. It might be working. Okay, let's try again. No. Okay, with the TX and RX lines changed. Uh, nothing. I may have to revert the settings. Or uh, actually, let's just try the second serial port again with a null modem cable. No, nothing. Not even like a baud rate mismatch or something. Because it would like at least send garbage. Or like receive garbage. Okay, let's go into service mode. Maybe in service mode we have more luck. Let's go into service mode. Here we go. We most likely don't need an all modem cable though. So I probably have to revert the settings. Yeah. Yeah, so let's revert the settings real quick. So now I have a, a normal terminal cable again. And now let's turn it on. Nah, nothing. And I had people be confused last time about the thing on the screen. Um, that may be a little bit unfortunate. I actually turned local echo on uh, that I see what I'm transmitting, but let's, uh, let's actually turn that off. Doesn't seem to work. So I need to find, I, I, I guess I need to find a manual for this thing or something. Okay, after consulting the manual, I figured out that um, this thing is supposed to have a graphics card. Um, except if it's a server. So this was a server, so it does not have a graphics card. So it outputs on serial port one with up to 111, 115,000 baud or something like that. Quite a lot, or it's just 11,000, I don't remember correctly anymore. Something with two ones in this uh, beginning. Um, I hope it is configured by standard 9200, but um, I don't know that. So what the manual suggests is resetting the machine, which you can do on a, with a button on the back, I think. And then it should reset everything, the configuration too. So we should see something. What I also think the manual says is the keyboard will not do anything because the, the communication is not bi-directional. It's just a monitor serial screen. And you have to still input via the actual HP keyboard that I don't have. So another thing that I could think of is that it's not happy that there is no keyboard and um, refuses to boot because of that. Uh, I definitely need to get one of those HP HIL keyboards. Let's turn it on and push the reset button. Okay, push the reset button. It changed something with the lights for sure. But not much else happened. 
But I'm still in, uh, in, I'm still in like that manual mode, right? So let's actually change it to normal mode and turn it on again. Okay, so the light's gone back as normal. And what happens when I push the reset button now? Here we go. Nothing. We should for sure see something. I am like, after consulting the manual, yeah, now everything is on, almost everything, except that green LED. But it is trying to boot or something. I don't fully understand what the problem is. The problem is, um, what I would like try is uh, it has a normal ISA card slot in it. So you can put ISA cards in it. Uh, so what I would try is putting in like an ISA graphics card and look if I get an output there. But it says explicitly in the manual that only certain cards work. And so I don't know which cards work. And so most likely my cards won't work. Honestly, I am kind of stuck here because I I would need to have some manual and I would need to have the keyboard for it most likely. The keyboard will probably give me more insight. Okay, so this ended a bit disappointing to be honest, or for me at least. Uh, I hope to at least see it do something in today's video. I am very specifically looking for an HP HIL keyboard and a graphics card for this computer. Specifically, those are those top-loaded cards, the specific ones, and I would wish to have one with RGB, but also monochrome would be good enough. If you have that and you would like to sell it to me, please hit me up. I am I am willing to buy something like that. If you find it on eBay or something, send it, send it into the Discord, please. So I thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And I have a Discord, you can join there, and I have a Patreon if you really want to support me. On the 15th of November, my new EP will release, so uh, keep your head out for that. And uh, see you in the next video. Bye!